the Beethoven. I would do anything for love. What are we doing? <laughs> With the business. Um, Fold it through. Let's get going. Let's get cracking. Hello everybody, how are you doing? I hope you're all doing really well. Welcome back to my channel and to not only a bacon video, but a bacon video with yours truly. Hey! Mr. Carrington, everybody. he's back. <laughs> well, there's quite a few new subscribers out there. So for those of you who don't know, this is you and also known as Mr. Carrington on YouTube and the other interweb, Instagram, blog, all that cool stuff. He's amazing. Aww. He's a DIY expert, YouTuber, vlogger. Expert. You are. <laughs> you are a thrifter. He's just brilliant. If you want to check him out, I'm going to be leaving his information down below Thank and you can go and invest a lot of your time Aww. there. Because you're brilliant. You are. He's fantastic. So yes, we are coming to you with a Valentine's inspired bacon video. I'm so excited. I'm not really a Valentine's kind of guy, I'm not no. going to lie, but you and asked his audience what you guys would like to see and a lot of people came back with Valentine's Day. I think, yeah. It's very popular. It is. So what says I love you more than giving someone food? Do you know? Is that food a is the way to a man's heart. I agree, to anyone's heart. Not only food, chocolate. Chocolate for me yeah. is like the ultimate, yes. Romance. I love it, I absolutely love it. So we're gonna be making molten chocolate puddings. It's probably one of the most classic things you can do for Valentine's Day. And they're really handy as well because you can make them, put them in the fridge, and then bake them literally 10 minutes before you're due to have dessert. I love that. Yeah, I love that, Siri did that. <laughs> and you're laughing, yeah, and these are the ones like the super oozy melt in the middle centers, which oh. is just naughty. Top with a bit of vanilla ice cream. That's your Valentine's Day sorted. Over on Ewan's channel, we're going to be making three Valentine's Day inspired cocktails. So if, you do, well. <laughs> if you've been watching for a while, you'll know that we do have a running theme where we do tend to make cocktail beverages on Ewan's channel. It's just a running theme now, isn't it? We yeah. did it for Christmas, we did it for Christmas last year. We're doing it again this year, absolutely. So yeah, if you want to check out that video, I will link that down below. And while you are over there, obviously do subscribe to Ewan. Are we ready? I'm ready. Excellent. You are going to need 100 grams of dark chocolate, 10 grams of cocoa powder, 100 grams of unsalted butter, two large free range eggs, 70 grams of caster sugar, 50 grams of plain flour, which I've sifted, and half a teaspoon of bacon powder. And that is it. Handful of ingredients. Easy stuff to grab hold of, right? Absolutely. And it's one of those desserts where I'm, I don't know anyone who doesn't like chocolate. No. It's delicious. Should we get going? Let's get going. Let's get cracking. So when you are making a chocolate pudding, the molten bit in the middle comes from when you melt chocolate. Yeah. So um, as a traditional chocolate cake, a chocolate sponge, you don't really have any wet ingredients, whereas this is extra luxurious, you need melting chocolate. So, um, as, as I call it a bain marie, as Zara did not know what a bain marie was, it's like a double boiler, I think the American viewers call it. I knew. <laughs> Essentially, water in a pan, you pop a heat proof ball on top and you melt the chocolate. So oh, that yeah. is what you know. Oh, you know that. That. Right, let's get a crack and we'll do that. If you do have a microwave, I don't. I don't know why I don't, but I, I definitely You're should. You're a good cook. I, 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 <laughs> I can see they are handy. Um, by all means, do it in a microwave, but if you do it on like 10 second bursts, yeah. and stir it every time, otherwise it can burn. Don't want it burn. Oh, I don't burn chocolate. Before. Oh my god, the smell. Mm. Boom. No, we're doing it on a, uh, on a pan today for safety, but by all means, do it on a microwave if you want to save yourself some time. What's your favourite like romantic song? Oh yeah. I'm quite a dramatic romantic, so yeah. I like a bit of like Power Ballad. Ballad. Power Ballads? Yeah. Power yeah, Ballad. yeah, yeah. I, that actually, if you go on my Spotify, that's probably one of my most recently played. Um, a bit around. around. Every now and then I get a little. <laughs> bit of Beethoven. I would do anything for love. How else have we got? Um, I will always love you. <laughs> what, else would, what else have we got? <laughs> Right. Okay, right, we were melting chocolate. <laughs> okay, so we pop some water in a bowl and then we're gonna crack in this chocolate. I'm using the Tesco's Bold and Velvety 74% chocolate. It's so, so good. Full of um, chocolatey goodness, so the better the chocolate quality, the more chocolatey it's gonna be at the end. So you just wanna break that off into a bowl like so. And it's a good idea as well to let the chocolate cool at the end before you add it to your eggs and butter. Okay, so in a stand mixer, or if you're using an electric whisk, by all means that'll work as well. I'm using my kitchen at the minute, and I have the caster sugar in the bowl. And what I'm going to do is whip that up with the two eggs, and you want it to be nice, creamy. You need air, basically. We're using plain flour, but the only rising agent will be the egg, and also a little bit of the bacon powder. So yeah, whisk some sugar and eggs together. And do two eggs. A couple of you guys said in my last bacon video, uh, crack an egg into a dish. I, I do usually, um, but yeah, when you're doing something like this, it's always a good idea. So off you pops up, one egg in. Yes, it's good job with doing it that way. Brilliant stuff. Right, perfect, that's one down. So we go straight in. 
Excellent. And then second egg. Excellent. Right. Oh, God. Behave. We've had some dad jokes today, haven't we? Do you want to do the honours? What we're we doing? Turning on the kitchen, man. It's very straightforward. So, do you feel like you're on the bake off? Yeah. <laughs> so, what you want to do is um, on the on the side where your hand is, mm -hmm. the other side. That's the latch. So, if you put that down with a support on the front. Yeah, perfect. And then lock it in. Very heavy. It is. Good bit of kit. That's and then down. start it on speed one. Just a little bit. Yeah. Just to get them going. Ooh, that's going to get you going. Yeah. Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, KitchenAid's really do that to me. <laughs> um, and then you can crack up the speed, another one. Fab. Until it's nice and combined, and then go ham. Sit, yeah. Amazing. And you want this to go nice and voluminous. Sorry, I don't know why my hands do this. You want this to be nice and frothy. <laughs> okay, so once your egg mixture has whisked with the sugar, you are going to be wanting something that is nice and creamy as this is. Let me just come across the camera so you can see. So you want like a nice, Ooh. thick, creamy consistency. Now that is air you've got in there. So you're adding ingredients to your bowl, you just want to make sure that you are being as gentle and delicate as possible, otherwise it'll knock all the air out. So, coming back to our chocolate. So, I've just melted the chocolate. It smells so good. It smells good, good doesn't it? And it's, it's like 80% melted. Mm -hmm. Then what you need to do is add the butter to this as well, and just melt the butter and just cool that down before you add it to the eggs, otherwise you'll have Scrambled chocolate egg pudding. But you don't want that. No, they want that, do they? No. Okay, so do you want to grab the butter stuff? Yeah. Amazing. And then we'll add that in to here. One at a time? One at a time. So it's going to go in. It might not seem like it's going to melt, but the residual heat in the chocolate will melt this, guys. Trust me. Okay. Fab. Can also experiment with this. Chocolate is like a classic and it's good, but you can do uh, raspberry. Yeah. You could do white chocolate if you wanted. You could do salted Sounds caramel. Good. Oh, now we're talking. I just, yeah, fab, thank could you. Could you put something else instead of butter if you don't um, want butter? Um, I guess, yeah. I mean, you could definitely do this if it was vegan, because the chocolate is vegan. Yeah. Um, egg replacement, you could do chickpea, um, which is oh, like yeah. chickpea water, definitely. But uh, I feel like uh, you can get a bit of dairy free butter. I just don't know if it would be as molten, do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Should I stop asking awkward questions? No, then? not at all, by all means. It's like Holly and Phil, you know, when Phil is in the zone. It's like, leave that to stir, and um, if it isn't melting, you can put it back on the hob just to help it along, but yeah, you just want that to be nice and glossy, but if you just stick the end of your finger in, um, and it's still like really, really hot, then leave it, otherwise it will scramble your eggs. So I'm just gonna pop that to one side. So into your mixer, you're gonna now wanna sieve your dry ingredients, that's your plain flour, your bacon powder, and your cocoa powder, and then just, don't whisk it. And you're done with the heavy KitchenAid equipment now. You can take this off. It's all, right. all good to go. KitchenAid, you've served as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bowl of the ready. We're going to do bacon powder, which is going to go straight in. Amazing. And we're going to do plain flour as well. I would, sorry, man. <laughs> I would definitely recommend sifting your ingredients because it just helps to keep the sponge nice and aerated. Um, it's not like the be all and end all, but if you can, I definitely would recommend. I've got an escapey bit of cocoa powder. Uh -huh. Amazing. Ding dong. <laughs> Ding dong. Ding dong. So while this is still melting, you can grab your spoon from earlier and just stir this together and fold it. You can do like figure of eight motions. You just want to make sure it's all nicely combined. You don't want any pockets of flour in there. Sorry about the awkward camera angle, guys. But I'm I'm not lucky enough to have a kitchen island otherwise. <laughs> this would be a hell of a lot easier. So yeah, just. Stare it, you can continue that mate if okay. you'd like. Just nice, nice. gentle folding actions. Gentle and fold. <laughs> gentle <laughs> and fold. Um, a lot of air in here, is that a good thing? It's a very good thing, yeah. mate. That's perfect. It's yeah, bubbling up. <laughs> Wonderful. So Ewan has very beautifully combined all of the dry ingredients with the egg mixture and that's looking perfect. So, in the meantime, what I did was grabbed some ramekins. Now, we're gonna be baking these in these types of ramekins. You can actually turn them out onto a plate. So when you cut them, they're nice and oozy. We're gonna be baking them in the ramekins. We actually still might do that, but all I've done is lightly butter them. And what I'm gonna do is pop a little bit of cocoa powder in and just dust them around as well, just to make sure that um, the, the fondant doesn't stick. Um, but like I say, these have actually got lids. So it's like a nice little surprise that you can like take the lid off. That's so like, nice. Yeah. Al Aldi. Let you really? Yeah, Oregon. Oregon. So get some heart shaped ones maybe if you see any. Yeah. Do you know where to send a crew set? Yeah. They're good. So what you want to do is grab a little bit of cocoa powder, literally not a lot at all guys, and sprinkle it into your ramekin. And then just tap it around on the base like so. Actually it might be enough in here for you at the time. Yeah, you, in oh. fact you go for that. Yeah. Yeah. Bit. And then um, you tap it around the sides as well and that just stops the fondant actually sticking. You can get your finger involved as well, just to 
corks it along the sides if it's been a little bit unruly. <laughs> so on a baking tray, I find it really easy when you are transporting these to the oven. If you're going to do more than um, two, if you're having like a lot of friends around, these don't have to be just Valentine's Steady Day. Steady on. And then, <laughs> whatever your Valentine's Day plans are. And um, it's just easy to transport them on a uh, tray. Mm -hmm. So the chocolate and um, butter has completely melted in there now. And that is just, oh God, slow that down and put some romantic music over that, dude. That smell. It smells amazing. So into the oven. So if you want to hold that, mm -hmm. when you add your chocolate in, if you add it to the side rather than into the middle, it's just easier to incorporate it. Okay. Do you with me? Yeah, very clever. Yeah. Again, you just want to um, fold that in in a figure of eight clockwise. Doesn't have to be clockwise. Just fold it in. Nice Don't and mention that we're horrendous. We have about as much grace in the forum. <laughs> we put some chocolate buttons down there. That's slightly better. So when you are putting this into your ramekins, you just want to make sure that. You've uh, put an equal amount in both, and you leave a lip, uh, like a gap from the the fondant to the top because it is going to rise. So you just want to start off what a little bit into one ramekin, and then hold that, and then pour it into the next. Good to share, but I mean, who wants to share chocolate, eh? Yeah. Okay, so now your ramekins are done. You can tidy them up if you want with a little bit of kitchen roll, but like. Um, these need to bake for around six to eight minutes at a 200 degree oven. If you have a fan oven, maybe knock it down to about 190. Play around with it, but you basically want the top to be cooked and the inside is gonna be oozing. It's gonna be oozing, it's gonna be good. So yeah, bake these for around six to eight minutes depending on your oven type and we'll be back with you once we've got some balls out and some ice cream. So excited, right, let's put them in. Okay, so they have had eight minutes in the oven. Super quick turnaround. Yeah. That's time for a little cheeky glass of bubbly. Oh, hello. They look fantastic. So they're nice and cooked on the top. I think they're done. Look at those. Oh. By no pressure. Oh, God. Um, so the trick is obviously to do it when it's hot. And um, these have risen quite a lot, actually, which is really good. So um, you can, of course, just eat them out of the ramekin. That's absolutely fine. But the idea is that basically you tip it out onto a plate and um, don't burn your hands because these are still really hot. This is where if, you, if, you're, if this is the first time you're cooking for your partner and you're on a date or something yeah. and it goes horribly wrong you've got yourself to blame. Blame me. Oh. 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 Was it molten? There we go guys. We've got it. We can cork that together. That. So these are out of the oven. This is turned into more of a chocolate pancake splodge but I think we just need maybe like a minute more longer. Um, I've currently got a second one behind us that's in the ramekin. That's probably going to be the sweet spot but look how oozy and chocolatey that is. Get involved so it. Good. it does, doesn't it? I'm gonna go straight in with the chocolate, it's gonna be quite hot. Mm. Next level. Do you know what it reminds me of? Chocolate fudge cake at school. Mm -hmm. Do you, ever, you know what you used to get with like lashings so of fudge? So good. How nice Tell you what, if you make this, this will be the best thing from your <laughs> I was just about to say, it's yeah. It'll be very hard to top this. Guys, sod the roses. Who wants roses? This is it. Make some on a chocolate pudding mm. and they'll thank you there. I can't stop eating that. Mm. If you have enjoyed this video guys and you do make the recipe, by all means do tag me in any photos on Instagram. I would absolutely love to see them. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you do want to make some cheeky Valentine's cocktails to go with this as well, head over to you and this channel. We're going to be making three very, very easy delicious cocktails. So. Keep your eye out for that. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for you and for always helping and being the excellent Thanks for having me. We're gonna finish this. So good. And make some cocktails. Thank you very Happy much for watching. Happy Valentine's yeah. Day. Happy Valentine's Day. I hope it is filled with love and joy and happiness. And if you are spending Valentine's Day on your own, make yourself a chocolate pudding and you'll be 10 times happier. Absolutely. <laughs> Escape on. <laughs> thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you very soon. Bye. Bye. Follow, follow, follow. I promise we haven't already done the cocktails. I video. swear. I'm being sure we're in my tea. Oh, have a little chocolate. Little chocolate, you pop it. Drain it, drain it, man. So in hold on, oh, 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 oh. oh my god. Oh my god. And some and some space reader nuts. <laughs> space reader break. With your business. Um, hold it through. It's a nice word, ramekin, isn't it? It's like a very robust word. Ramekin. Ramekin. Um, why are you just addressing this chocolate thing? <laughs> I do. I want to help! I want to help! I want to help!